Over to you, John. Thanks, Dylan. Um, firstly, I, I don't often put um, disclaimers up, but uh, this uh, presentation, although shared by many in our industry, may not represent in total the agreed position of all IGC members or your company members. Uh, as, as with your fishing industry, there's a lot of different um, uh, schools of thought, as you know. Um, they're presented here to consideration of possible joint development uh, by both our industries. So uh, I'll go brief introduction, very brief overview of the seismic process. Um, I could talk all day about the seismic process, but I won't. Uh, a few seismic facts that may be of interest to you guys. Multi-client business model, which has caused a lot of consternation in the last year or two. Uh, a brief preview of the types of research into the impacts on fish and invertebrates. Examples of closer working relationships that have happened. And then a summary, just um, what can we do go for going forward. <coughs> so both industries are issued with permits, licenses to operate the same areas and probably the same operational seasons. For example, the Great Australian Bike, nobody wants to go down there and, and work in the winter, for example. Uh, both uh, industries uh, operate in a similar regulatory environment. Access restrictions, I heard some comments about that uh, earlier in some of the other presentations. Misguided or over-regulation, which comes about as a result of public pressure. Delayed decisions by the regulator. Regulatory creep, isn't that fantastic? You, you encounter that as well. And it's all generally uh, driven by public pressure. And although there are examples of uh, close cooperation um, and coordination, poor communicate, although poor communications and lack of understanding often lead to um, significant problems. So a very brief uh, overview of the seismic process. Uh, oh. So basically we've got an energy source here, we're sending out uh, down um, sound waves and they bounce off the various uh, interfaces to come back to a sensor on the surface. And this is what it looks like at the surface. Uh, this is a 2D uh, survey. That, that ship is about 66 meters long. Those are the actual seismic pulses. This is the boy at the front of one stream and look at the out, out this way. The next one here is a 3D survey, so you can see a whole bunch of uh, the same sort of source configuration here, but a whole bunch of streamers behind it. So they're not exactly manoeuvrable, those vessels. Uh, and then, just briefly, I'll show you what one of these sources look like. They're actually spread over about 16 by 25 metres. And they have a whole, whole series of elements um, uh, with compressed air. In them. So, a few seismic facts that you may find interesting. Um, the seismic array is operated at 2,000 psi. Now that compares with 3 million psi for an underwater dynamite explosion. So we're not actually seismic blasting as some ENGOs would claim. 45,000 psi is the chamber of pressure of a 303 rifle. I understand some of you guys, divers, uh, often use them as powerheads to um, get a shaft off. And um, 2,000 to 3,000 psi with, for a diver's ox oxygen cylinder, for example. And even though attenuation in water is slower than there, it is still very significant. If you remember that doubling the distance halves the sound level rule and 6 dB is approximately half the sound level. So something that's 230 dB at 1 metre becomes 224 at 2 metres, 218 at 4 metres, etc. 206 at 16 metres. And the next one just shows you, unfortunately, that, and I won't discuss the logarithmic scales here because it could take quite a while. 
that logarithmic scales are used by acousticians to plot as many values on a graph as possible. So uh, generally what happens is each blip on a blip here on a scale, that's 100 meters, that's 1,000 meters, that's 10,000 meters, and that's um, 100,000 meters. So it's a factor of 10 each blip. Um, it, this is why you can't show um, down to zero on, on this chart here, because the next blip, would, if this would be 10 meters here, one meter would be over here and 0.1 meter would be behind. But basically, on a log scale, because dBs are what log, well, this vertical scale, the attenuation looks like a straight line. However, if that's converted to pressure, which is the thing that does the damage and the thing that creates the noise, you can see there that the near the source, it, it, it's the dramatic uh, drop in um, so that's, the, I think, the quick tech. Well, I'll just show you quickly some comparisons of um, seismic sounds with echo sounders, breaching whales, etc. You can see there the echo sounder at 235 dB, seismic pulse in, in this range, and a whole series of other levels. Okay, multi client business. Um, this happens when a seismic contractor normally an IAGC member will propose to acquire seismic in a, in a prospective area. It's either a gazettal area or, or a, a successful exploration well has been drilled there. So the objective of the member of the, uh, the company collecting the data is to sell the data to as many clients as possible. Um, unlike the propriety model where they contract to an oil company and, and do the, the work for one client. It does avoid overlapping proprietary data, but the, su the, the surveys are generally much larger. And this is where the problem comes. A number of seismic contractors may propose similar multi-client surveys over that same area. And they must, according to NOPSEMA's requirements, uh, conduct their stakeholder engagement and their marketing in parallel. So that gives the impression that multiple dupl duplicative surveys are going to be done in the same area. In fact, the market uh, is very unlikely to support more than two surveys, for example, a 2D and a 3D, and it may not even support <coughs> one survey. So all that consultation that's gone on um, just uh, might not result in a survey. Brief review of research um, into captive fish. So exposing captive fish to seismic sounds provides a very rough guide on the captive fish are not free to execute their normal behaviors, which would reduce their exposure and they would swim away. And, and it's known that in captivity that they don't exhibit the full range of behaviors. And also the characteristics of the sound exposure in that tank is very, very different to the characteristics that they would experience in the ocean. Second type is um, to study fish in the natural environment. It's costly and difficult, <coughs> but there are great opportunities for using seismic surveys of, as platforms of opportunity um, with co close cooperation with the fishing industry, for example. And the third category is obviously um, combining catch statistics, catch per unit effort um, relative to seismic surveys. This is probably an area where close cooperation uh, between the industries would lead to a much better understanding of both our industries. The studies would be cost effective, but there are ob obviously impact of numerous issues which um, would have to be accommodated. You know, changes in fishing gear over time, confidentiality of catch statistics, uh, statistical methods used to analyze the data, um, 
other possible impacts on, on that area, you know, climate change, um, weather, etc. And also need a good understanding of sound field generated by seismic surveys. But it is an area where um, we could yield some very important information if, if both industries work together. So some examples of closer working relationships. I, th I think there are lo ro lobster fishing <coughs> industry, that a lot of that, um, there's coordination of activities, associations, West Australia, Vic Victoria and Tasmania. That general, generally requires the hire of a scout vessel from the local fleet and, and the skipper has to be permitted to, to remove pot from the path of the vessel. And there's a well sort of uh, settled compensation system for loss of catch as a, as a result of temporarily removing pots and returning them to the relevant fishermen. And that's based on calculated on previous catch rates and the model appears to work well. Participation in annual meetings, um, Tasmania Rock Lobster Fishermen's Association, for example, during 2006 to 2000, two, 2002 to 2006, when my employer conducted surveys along the southern margins from South Australia to Tasmania, I participated in TRLFA's technical day and dinner each October before the seismic season. I presented at their technical day, regardless of whether there was going to be a seismic survey coming up in the following season or not. So if, if there wasn't a seismic survey coming up, I'd report on either last season's work or an aspect of seismic. That built relationships and became part of community. And I was very honoured to take part in a in a lobster taste off to taste <laughs> the the four or five different lobsters that um, you you have in different regions, and there's a, a picture of the, the three of us. That there was the leader of the opposition and professor uh, professor there, and poor little me as well. Um, working together to get a better understanding of seismic surveys on it. On a very localised fishery, for example, cold band snapper in the Northern Territory. Um, seismic survey was located in a highest catch area based on the CPUE. Previous, and, and it was agreed that under a confidentiality agreement, the previous three years CPUE would be released for statistical analysis. That showed uh, seasonal and annual catch trends analysed by a an ex-CSI statistician, and then we agreed on forward projections for both parties. And um, the operator agreed to compensate for lost catch, if there was any, um, on the basis of um, actual CPUE results uh, relative to forward estimates. On condition that, fishing would continue because it was important for both parties to understand the uh, potential impacts on, on the, the catch. Um, on the other hand, if it was not possible to fish in right in the vicinity of the survey area, the operator would compensate for fuel costs involved in trial fishing in other areas, generally requiring some more sail time to get there. And then um, also there was some work done by Curtin University uh, to check their ears, that type of thing, we heal. So the results of that, oops, general results, actually new gold band snapper fishing locations were found. I've actually been told, and of course this is still subject to confidentiality uh, agreements and all that, that the, probably the costs of the analysis probably came to more than the amount paid out in compensation. However, that analysis was important to, to both industries. And there were actually reasonable catches still caught in relatively close, close proximity to the seismic survey. <coughs> this was uh, the, the red is the outline of the survey. This is the center racetrack that was being acquired. The black in here are the sail lines that were recorded in a racetrack fashion <coughs> on the 4th of July. That was actually a, a catch statistics from the CPUE effort of that particular licensee. 
that's you can see within about five kilometers of the side line. So what can we do to achieve a closer working relationship? Well, merge the catch statistics with seismic survey and other information. That requires cooperation, but it does lead to better understanding uh, of the concerns and the potential impacts. Potentially use seismic surveys as platforms of opportunity, e.g. monitor the sound levels at key locations, monitor behavior or physical responses to, say, cages of, that were are put down in certain locations in the, in the survey area. That requires cooperation and coordination. Um, minimize the impacts on each other's operations, on, uh, on water cooperation and coordination. For example, that last case in, in the Northern Territory. With clo close coordination, it is possible to fish in the survey area and get good caches. And of course, all this needs to be associated with communicating the best available science in an open and transparent manner and to support studies to fill those knowledge gaps after a detailed and balanced review of our current knowledge. So I think that's basically it. Um, thank you for listening. And just as Jenny Shaw mentioned uh, in the previous session, she likes the words beginning with C. We look, IGC looks forward to further communication, coordination, cooperation, and hence harmonious coexistence. Thank you. Thank you.